Hey everyone, Cal here with another Tiny Tina's Wonderland video, and we're going to be looking at a leveling build for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. So today we're taking a look at the Clawbringer class and its Wyvern Companion. Now of course the Wyvern Companion is pretty much just as passive, you have a companion that flies around you, it's a Wyvern, it's great, everybody loves a little dragon. But at first when you pick the class, you're going to need to decide between Cleansing Flames, which is you hitting the ground with a fire hammer, or Storm Dragon's Judgment. Now, personally, I prefer Storm Dragon's Judgment because you're literally, like, four. You throw an electric hammer, and you can recall the hammer as well, so it deals damage along the path. So that's pretty cool. So I'd recommend Storm Dragon's Judgment. You can unlock this at level 7 while playing through the campaign. Then, when it comes to skill points, you want to put 5 points into Oath of Fire. This one's very nice because it gives bonus uh, fire damage to your guns by 20%, which is kind of cool. Then, of course, we're also going to put points into Oath of Thunder. Now, this is where the Fate Maker's melee damage and their Wyvern Companion deal a lot of bonus lightning damage. We want to put as many points into that as we can, which is 5, so we get a max of 25% bonus damage for our melee and the Wyvern. We're going to buff up the Wyvern quite a lot, because if you're playing through the campaign, having that Companion is just a great source of damage, especially if you're playing solo. But there are going to be bonus perks for playing in a group as a Clawbringer shortly, too. Then, once we've unlocked tier 3, we're going to take a look at Blast Hammer's favor. Now, this is pretty cool, because killing an enemy with a gun, or whenever the Wyvern Companion kills an enemy, will also summon a Fire Orb that seeks out and damages enemies with Fire Ability Damage. Now, I've had a curse in the Chaos Dungeon, where it's an Ice Orb, but it follows me, and I can tell you now these orbs do incredible amounts of damage, so a Fire Orb that seeks enemies is going to be pretty insane. Now, if you kill an enemy with a melee damage or the wyvern kills an enemy with its claws, it summons a lightning orb instead. So there's a lot of difference between like fire and lightning with this class, and that's kind of a real selling point for me, I think. So put a point into Blast Hammer's favor. Then we're going to go back up to Dragon Aura and put five points into this. This increases the elemental damage by 20% around us in like a certain range. So that's also giving you buffs to yourself and to allies you're playing with. So if you're a solo player, you're getting 20% elemental damage and your friends are as well if you're playing together. Then we're going to go down to the very bottom tier that we can actually put points into. And this time we're going to go with Firebolt. Here the Wyvern Companion will occasionally shoot Firebolt at enemies, causing fire damage in an area on impact and dealing fire damage over time, obviously because it's burning the area. And it does quite a lot of damage. Firebolt damage is 809. The cooldown 16 seconds, but you also get 8% gun damage, and that's awesome. And then we're going to go to the right and go to Storm Breath. The Wyvern Companion will occasionally use its Lightning Breath on enemies, dealing lightning damage that can arc from enemy to enemy. So it's Chain Lightning from the Wyvern's Breath. Like, the damage from the Wyvern in this build is just absolutely insane. So we're going to actually put a point into that. You also get damage reduction. So both Storm Breath and Firebolt are giving you increased damage, and damage reduction while your wyvern is getting insane damage depending on the abilities it's using in the battlefield then because we've already been buffing the companion i want to put five points into friend to flame this increases the wyvern companion's damage dealt by a hundred percent this is obviously a must use or a must fill perk set when using the wyvern and buffing it up for this leveling build and then we're going to go down to the ability called Awe. After dealing fire damage, the Fate Maker gains increased critical hit damage for a short duration. And then after you deal lightning damage, the Fate Maker also gets critical hit chance for a short duration. We want to put points into that, and again, as many as we can. And that will give us 15% critical hit damage, 33% critical hit chance, and it's on a 12 second duration. Now we're going to also talk about Indomitable. This perk is absolutely incredible. So it states if the Fate Maker would enter Save Your Soul, that's when you get downed and people can revive you. Instead, you instantly refill your shield and deal bonus lightning damage for a short duration. However, it does have a long cooldown, but it saves you from going down. So definitely put a point in that. And like I so say, you get 20% extra bonus lightning damage and its duration is 20 seconds, but the cooldown is 2 minutes. And then we're going to put one more point into the actual Clawbringer skill tree, which is Storm Smite. So whenever the Fate Maker activates their action skill, they call down elemental bolts that deal fire damage or lightning ability damage to nearby enemies. This skill obviously has a long cooldown, and it does 687 damage. It has four bolts of lightning or fire, 
and it's on a cooldown of 25 seconds. But overall, this class is just very passive damage that is buffing yourself and allies with elemental damage. Your companion is out there dealing so much damage, so if you go down, you're obviously going to be fine because your companion's killing things for you. You even have an extra life, essentially, with Indomitable as well that buffs you. Everything is just about buffing with this, and the Wyvern just does insane amounts of damage. So once you've actually put all these points into the required skills for the Clawbringer, that leaves you with 16 skill points for your secondary class if you want to multi-class. But I'm going to leave you guys to decide which class you want to spec into, because obviously everyone has different opinions and what they like and preferences, so that one's up to you guys. But for the Clawbringer, I'd recommend going through with this build until you actually hit level 40. But hopefully you now have an understanding on how to build the Clawbringer, and as usual, our guide here is to give you the best guides that are quick and let you jump straight back into the game. So if you like that, then hit the like button and subscribe for more Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. My name is Cal, and here's a big thank you from everyone at Realm Space Gaming for watching our videos, and don't forget to enjoy the rest of your day.